Yes, yes, it's all very pretty, a fancy folding phone with all the latest tech, apart from the camera. But what has it really been like to own a Galaxy Z Fold 3 in 2022? Has it been all it's hyped up to be, or has it been completely impractical and a colossal waste of money? Let me answer that for you. So the Z Fold 3 is a beautiful phone. There is no denying that. And it's actually not as impractical as you might first think. But I do have a confession to make, and it's something that I'm not particularly proud of. Sometimes I like to look at other phones. Sorry. Listen, it's not that I don't like it and it's not that I'm particularly bored of it. It's just that the Z Fold 3 sits in a bit of a funny place for me. On one hand, it's a complete productivity powerhouse. And then on the other, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Why you might ask? Well, it's big and it gets even bigger when you throw some clothes on it. To the point, it's too big, annoyingly big. Then there's also the fact that it's fragile or at least it feels fragile. I've not thrown this phone on the sofa once since getting it. I treat it like a brand new phone every day, which is great in some respect, but I'm just too scared to break it. And yet the 7.6 inch screen has been a godsend. Multitasking is easy, games look fantastic, and when you're really done for the day, it serves as a lovely little pocket cinema screen. But then the cover screen aspect ratio really does annoy me a lot. Instagram gets all squished, YouTube shorts get chopped up, and a lot of apps do tend to get just as upset as I do with the Fold 3's cover display. Do you see what I'm getting at here? All aboard the Z Fold 3 seesaw. And a seesaw would be a really good analogy to describe the Z Fold 3. And what determines what side that seesaw is going to come down down on is you. And I cannot stress this enough. You really do need to think about whether or not you can fit this phone into your lifestyle, because I can assure you is not going to fit into everyone's life. If you travel a lot, for example, go out to festivals or live near a beach, then probably not. If you work a lot, commute, or just live a slightly less adventurous lifestyle, then perhaps this is a phone for you. So I'll leave you to think about that. But in the meantime, how has the Galaxy Z Fold 3 been as a phone over the past five or six months for me? Well, Despite all the things I've mentioned at the start, it's actually been pretty damn brilliant. Performance isn't something you should ever have an issue with. Battery life at first to me felt pretty awful if I'm being honest, but now it's getting me to the end of the day. Then there's One UI 4.0 and Android 12, which complement the phone really nicely. It all feels buttery smooth. And the camera, well, the camera sucks. No, it doesn't suck. It's actually a pretty good camera. But I think the point that reviewers have been making is that if you pay $1,600, $1,700 for a phone, you kind of expect the latest and greatest camera tech. You don't get that here at all. But we'll talk more about the camera later on. Now, ignoring the obvious size issues with the Galaxy Z Fold 3, the design is actually very nice. It does take some getting used to to type on the front cover display, but now I make just as many mistakes as I would with a regular candy bar phone. Then there's a placement of the volume rocker and the fingerprint scanner. In my opinion, it's very sensible, it's very easy to use, and because of the slimmer design of the cover display or the Z Fold 3 when it's folded up in your hand, it's very accessible, very easy to use. I do miss having an under display fingerprint scanner, I will admit, but it's not the end of the world and I have got used to using this physical fingerprint scanner on the side of the Z Fold 3. One thing that has really upset me with the design side of the Z Fold 3 though is this. This is the Phantom Green Z Fold 3. I don't think I really need to say anything else on that subject. Anyway, I think you see my point now. You could argue that it's all a bit hit and miss when it comes to the Galaxy Z Fold 3's design and actual practicality. But as I said earlier, you need to decide whether you can fit this phone into your lifestyle or not. So if you are thinking about taking the plunge, what else makes this phone special? Is it just the folding mechanism that makes this phone so fancy and sought after? Or is there other things going on under the hood? Well, let's take a look at the specs. Since the Z Fold 2, there have been numerous improvements that will have got those waiting on the sidelines to take the plunge make that all important decision. The first being the IPX8 water resistance. It was a fantastic addition to the Z Fold 3 and was the sole feature that made me think, okay, now I'm ready for this phone. But there is no dust resistance, which is a big drawback for some. And that's why earlier I made that joke about going to the beach. This is quite a big problem considering there are some moving parts to this phone now specifically the hinge, and I am personally convinced that there is a bit of dust stuck under the display. Perhaps it's gone through the cracks in the hinge. I'm not sure how it's got there, but if you look on Reddit and other forums, you'll see that a lot of other people have been reporting similar things. 
Although this is a big shame, we did get Gorilla Glass Victus, which is supposedly a more durable yet more flexible material. And we also have that nice aluminum or aluminium material for the chassis and the hinge, which does give the Galaxy Z Fold 3 a bit more of a premium luxury vibe. It does feel really good in the hand. Build quality aside, we've got things like the silky smooth 120 hertz refresh rate on both the cover display and the inner display. This is something that I said in my initial review or a first video before the Z Fold 3 came out that I don't think I was going to be too bothered about. But since moving to 120Hz and then picking up my Note 10, which is at 60Hz, I kind of get why 120Hz is so important to some people. On the subject of displays, I must tip my hat to the beauty of the inner dynamic AMOLED display. That along with the very impressive dual firing speakers make the Galaxy Z Fold 3 a perfect media consumption device. And I suppose you could even compare it to an iPad mini of sorts, except with better resolution. And that is the beauty about the Z Fold 3 or any other folding phone. Yes, it is expensive, but if you think about it, you're essentially getting two in one. You're getting a phone and a tablet that fits in your pocket. Bearing all this in mind, I do really want to highlight the impressive specifications of this phone. We won't go through all of them, but the main things to note are 12 gigabytes of RAM and that Snapdragon 888 chip, which has been an absolute beast, to be honest. I can honestly say this is the first phone that I've never had an issue with any stuttering, any pauses. Nothing has indicated that it's been struggling with performance. Also on the performance point, it's been the first phone where multitasking has really made sense to me. With previous smaller phones, there's always been the option for pop out windows and split screen modes, yet they haven't really appealed to me because they've been virtually pointless because the phone screens are so small. Now though, I can really make the most of these features and further to this, I have to commend Samsung on the excellent execution of their multitasking options. I regularly use all of these features, most noticeably when I'm scripting and doing research at the same time. It means I can have my document on one side and then my browser open on the other side. This paired with apps such as Trello, for example, make the Galaxy Z Fold 3 the perfect phone for entrepreneurs and busy bees who need to stay productive all the time. Now, one thing I do have an issue with with the Galaxy Z Fold 3 is the S Pen. It's great that the support is there and it is quite special using it on that inner display, especially if you're an artist, call me Picasso. But for one, you have to buy it separately and do bear in mind that the Galaxy Z Fold 3 is costing you almost $2,000 for a phone or nearly £2,000 if you're in the UK. And now you've got to add this extra accessory on top, which to me is quite an important feature. Then secondly, there's nowhere to store it. And then lastly, you can't use it on the front display. All of these things have had me eyeing up the Galaxy S22 Ultra recently and has made me miss my Note 10 Plus. So question of the day, if money was no object, would you pick right now a Galaxy Z Fold 3 or a Galaxy S22 Ultra? Let me know down in the comment section and slap that subscribe button while you're at it. Now we've joked and made reference to the Z Fold 3's camera setup several times in this review. And the general consensus of the Z Fold 3's camera setup is that it's bad. It's not, think S21. Not S21 Ultra, just S21. So the cameras are good. As I mentioned earlier, they're not what you would expect for paying such a hefty price tag for a phone. And yet the photos aren't half bad at all. They're definitely Samsung-y. They've got that beautiful, strong color and contrast with sensible sharpening and good dynamic range. You've also got a nice selection of focal lengths to choose from, and you can even record at 60 FPS 4K with the stabilization features turned on. I'd argue that that's more than enough for a phone, especially since most media is shared and consumed on phones nowadays and you are lucky to find a phone that has a 4K capable screen. One of my biggest concerns with the Galaxy Z Fold 3 was actually the under display camera on the inner display. Now it is quite low resolution in comparison to other phones and this was what personally put me off but Actually, when you get it out, you really can't see a difference and it's just fine for doing video calls or anything like that. And because the Z Fold 3 is a folding phone, you can always just flip out your front screen and use your actual main camera 
as your selfie camera. And that is the beauty about it. You really don't actually need that under display camera. And when you do use it, you're just using it to chat to your mates on Facebook or whatever. And quality really isn't that important. Anyway, the Fold 3 has been a delight for me. There's no denying that. And although I've got a perfectly good Note 10 Plus really wanting me back, I don't think that I could go back to a candy bar phone now. Yes, I do look at other phones. I've of course had my eye on the latest S22 Ultra. That looks like a fantastic phone, but there's something about having a foldable phone for someone who is a content creator, a bit of a workaholic and a gamer that just really fits into my lifestyle and does me some justice. The only thing that would make me change from a folding phone now is if Samsung or another reputable company comes out with a rollable phone. I think rollable phones will take over foldable phones eventually because they're going to be more practical. You can look to the Oppo X for an example of what that might look like. Anyway, as always, let me know in the comments what you think of the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and if you did enjoy the video leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. For now though I've been Alex this has been Tech It Easy thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.